display to full screen and please check your audio. We recommend using headphones and you are muted by the staffs, but you may still raise your questions in text format using the question tab in the dialog box located at the upper right on your screens. So I know few of you may not know MIDA Soilworks yet, so we will do a quick introduction of MIDA Soilworks before going to the topic. This is the webinar contents where we will address different failures of embankment dam and how can Soilworks lessen the analysis iteration using three out of seven powerful modules letting you to just focus on the design principles and theories to have an economic and safe design. So Soilworks is an all-in-one 2D finite element analysis and analytical software for geotechnical and structural engineers. This powerful software has seven modules, namely slope, ground, rock, soft ground, foundation, seepage, and dynamic. Each module is dedicated to respective analysis, but it can be combined to other modules to carry out the complex analysis. With this, Soilworks can cover all the practical geostructural analysis requirements using only one software. And in this webinar, we will focus on the soft ground, slope, seepage, and the coupled analysis in these modules. So for the embankment dam, here's an overview. Earth or embankment dam are built by compacting successive layers of earth. Depending on the volume of embankment materials, it can be categorized as earth fill or rock fill embankment dam. If the dominant material used for fill is comp composed of rock, it is a rock fill embankment and vice versa. So its generic trapezoidal shape is designed to accommodate the water level of the reservoir with the required freeboard providing internal stability. The slope where the reservoir is located is the upstream slope and the other side is the downstream slope which is the direction of the seepage flow. So in principle, larger embankment dams require two main components which is the core and the shell fill. Other details such as horizontal drain, toe drain, uh, pitch protection and others are installed for higher efficiency. The core should have a very low permeability and is recommended to be soil with a very plastic or high plasticity. And the supporting shoulders or shoulder, short, shoulder fill is composed of coarser earth fill which is highly permeable and with high uh, shear strength for slope stability. Embankment dam can be classified into three types, which is the homogeneous, uh, zoned, and the diaphragm type. So homogeneous types are embankments composed of single type of material. It is convenient in construction as the slope recommendation is close to being flat and var variations like tow drain, blanket, etc. can also be used in this type of embankment. Next is the zone type. It is composed of zones with different soil properties, usually a central impervious core made of clay, concrete, or other accepted materials, and previous material with high shear strength to enclose and protect the core. The upstream shell provides the stability for the rapid drawdown, and the downstream shell acts as a drain to control the line of seepage. And the diaphragm type, however, is similar to zone type but composed mostly of pervious material due to the thin layer of impervious material that can be located at the upstream face or at the center. So here is the uh, typical embankment dam details composed of different zones with seepage and stability controls aspects such as the drains, cut off trenches, berms, and others. So there are various modes of failures in earth dams and it can be grouped into three categories which is the mainly the hydraulic failures, structural failures, and the seepage failures. Hydraulic failures are the surface erosion of the dam caused by water. 
It can be the erosion of upstream face and shoulder by the action of continuous wave action. and seepage failures. Hydraulic failures are the surface erosion of the dam caused by the water and it can be the erosion of uh, downstream by rain wash, erosion of downstream toe of okay Hydraulic feature failures are the uh, surface erosion of the dam caused by water and it can be the erosion of downstream slope by rain wash, erosion of downstream toe of the dam by the tailwater, erosion of upstream face and shoulder by the action of continuous wave action. Surface erosion can be reduced by adding the respective control details such as slow protection like riprap, vegetation, and others. While cases of overtopping of the reservoir since it is caused by the uh, flood level that exceeded the designed flood for the spillway or insufficient preboard, overall design such as the flood level, dam height, and settlement must be considered. And another uh, one reason for insufficient preboard is caused by the excessive settlement of the embankment and the foundation. This failure also falls under the structural failure of the dam and this can be addressed and accounted in the design using the first soil works module that we will be discussing today, which is the soft ground. Soft ground usually pertains to clay, but there are literatures which considers other soil types to be a weak layer depending on the end value from the standard penetration test. Consolidation properties of the soft ground, loading, and duration of construction can be modeled using this module. Some design application of soft ground module is displayed such as the immediate settlements in granular soils, 1D consolidation, drainage functionality, and uh, calculation of preloading height. So for the consolidation analysis, uh, since consolidation analysis is largely classified into theoretical 1D consolidation analysis method and the finite element method, 1D consolidation analysis enables the user to readily obtain the results through a simple process following the Terzaghi's theory. While in FEM, SoilWorks assumes that the interpolation function of pore water pressure is identical to that of displacement. Other parametric analysis such as preliminary analysis for checking the analysis trend of the foundation and the drain spacing and preloading can also be defined using this module. So all soil improvement method disturbs the ground, affecting the coefficient of consolidation. And ground penetration causes smear effects which may result to the delay of consolidation. So soft ground module also accounts for the smear effects in the consolidation. Soil works can also model some of the soil improvement methods such as the sand drain method, paper drain method, or the cylindrical drain method, pack drain method, sand compaction or gravel compaction pile methods. Here are the FEM results that shows the actual ground behavior through the mesh and display the deformed shape of the model. And when the consolidation results can be viewed in intuitive graphs of change in soil strength due to the installed soil improvement and graphs for preliminary and residual settlement can be checked in the control points placed vertically on the model. So for the uh, design of the earth dam and first we will use the soft ground module we will check the immediate and consolidation settlement of the earth dam foundation. So this massive structure with a base width of 150 meters and a fill height of 30 meters is a zone type earth fill embankment. 
Its core is composed of clay with sand and gravel drains as seepage control and transition to the random earth fill shoulders, assuming that each stage of embankment is thoroughly compacted. So no immediate and consolidation settlement will be checked on the whole embankment and instead will consider the settlement that will only occur in the foundation. So we will use these indicative uh, engineering properties for compactive, compacted earth fill as a preliminary ground type materials for the earth dam structure. And while this bore lag, borehole lag for the foundation, uh, more column properties of the soil is tabulated and additional data for clays will be inputted on the program demo. Using 1D consolidation in soft ground module, we will assess the total settlement in different parts or the uh, in different parts of the embankment. So we will start with the soft ground. So first, open soil works. So at the beginning, you can see the seven modules present here in soil works. So we will select the soft ground module. Click soft ground. Then check for the defined initial parameters, click OK. Then for the geometry, we will import a CAD model to represent our geometry here in SoilWorks. To do that, go to the SoilWorks logo on the upper left, click import, select the CAD file. Then change this to DXF, select for the uh, DXF file, then click open. So just click OK. And as you can see, the geometry for the uh, soft ground or the 1D consolidation analysis has been done by importing a CAD file. After that, we'll go to the uh, 1D consolidation tab and define our ground material properties. So here in ground material properties under the soft ground, you can select a model type from embankment, sand, clay, modified clay, elastic ground, more column, elastoplastic, and elastoviscoplastic. You can also select from our database here. And also you can customize or you can add your ground data to our database so in order to do that let's close it first minimize then uh, you can look for the attach files on your handouts tab select for the bh-01 and the ground data for them uh, copy it and go to the installation folder of the soil works go to the dbase uh, folder then uh, paste the uh, items here on the database after that uh, you have to close it then you have to go back to your soilworks model and check for the database by going again to under 1d consolidation click ground material property go to database and look for it under this drop down button so as you can see the bh-001 and the ground data for them is already added on our database so as our preliminary assumption we'll do uh, 1d consolidation analysis in the whole structure but we expect that the settlement must be checked only at the foundation area so since we are assuming that the whole embankment dam is uh, is constructed with is is constructed properly with proper compaction so we we can assume that no consolidation will be checked on the embankment dam so for that we'll go to the database select for the ground data for dam uh, choose the select all button then change the model type to embankment click on assign 
and as you can see that all the uh, ground material properties are incorporated on the uh, input fields here in the soft ground module so for the uh, foundation we'll do the same go to the database select for the bh-001 then first is we will add all the coarse grain material on our borehole so selecting the silty sand sand 1 gravel and the sand 2 and change the model type to sand click on assign and you can see that the uh, coarse grain materials are set as the model type sand so after that go again to database select for bh-001 and select for the clay material then changing the model type to clay and select assign after that we'll do a, mo a simple modifications on our ground material properties under the model type embankment you don't need to add additional properties or parameters but for the foundation uh, you must have to input the SPTN value and the calculation method before proceeding to the analysis so for the silty sand we can check that the uh, SPTN value ranges from 3 to 11 so we will we'll select the lower limit which is 3 and the calculation method will be BK Ho after that click on modify then select sand 1 for sand 1 we can see that the end value is 13 so we can change the calculation to BK Ho select modify and do the same for the other ground levels So for the, clay, for the clay, there are additional parameters that you have to check first on your geotechnical data. But for now, we will just have to change the SPTN value. And the calculation method must be in CC, but you can use the uh, change in A or the MV method. So for the compression index, we'll specify a point. Uh, 22 and the for the CR is 0 0.044 so no pre-consolidation pressure shall be added and the clay type must be uh, the over consolidation ratio or the OCR must be input as one for normally consolidated clays and uh, you can specify other values for uh, over consolidated clays since the clay layer is located on sandwich between the two two coarse coarse grain material, you can set the draining condition to double phase. Then the period for secondary uh, consolidation, you can also specify it. But today, we'll assume a ten-year period for the secondary consolidation. Then you can also change the E log and uh, MV log P by checking this uh, drop down button. But since we don't have that uh, parameters yet, we can go. We can proceed to the analysis by selecting the modify and close. So after that, we have to assign the ground material properties on our model data. So to do that, go to geometry tab click on the smart surface so all space bounded by the elements shall be automatically created by shall be automatically registered as a surface by doing the smart surface uh, function then we'll assign the earth fill first if you want to select a surface you can also change the as uh, a selection filter to surface then just double click the surface and you can check that it was selected once it is highlighted or turned into blue so in order to select the ground material properties to the model data 
just click hold for the ground material property on the works tree then drop it on the model data so that way that's also a drag and drop function for easily assigning of the properties for the clay core select the clay core and for the sand drains just drag and drop so this material is also uh, assigned as sand drain as sand drain as an uh, transition uh, transition zone from the earth fill embankment to the clay core so this area is assigned as riprap for the continuous wave protection which is the continuous wave from the reservoir and from the right side you can see that these are the gabions so select for the gabions and the middle uh, sand, the middle part of this uh, drain uh, drain details is the gravel drain or the gravel fill for our foundation we'll select these parts which is the silty sand below is the clay so we are following uh, the borehole details silty sand clay the first sand silty sand clay the first sand then gravel second sand and gravel so silty sand clay sand gravel and gravel so you will select this and assign the sand to so after assigning all the ground material properties we can now proceed to the 1d consolidation tab we will we will define a line load on the crest so we will click the line load function under the 1d consolidation tab then define a load set uh, set it as surcharge then click close so set it as a strip load and the values are negative 9 kPa for W1 and W2 select a curve then click on apply so the, the surcharge load at the crest which can be a roadway section of the dam is applied click close and define the support so under the boundaries click on support then specify a boundary set for support so let us name it as support then close change the boundary set to support the selection type to curve and the degree of freedom will select the DX, DZ, and RY and set the curve on the bottom area since the gravel on this area reaches the uh, hard strata we can assume that no deflection or settlement must be done on the bottom area of the foundation click on apply then close after that go to the analysis and design and create an analysis case click add and we'll name it as the settlement check for the foundation the analysis method must be one the consolidation analysis so we'll use all layer sets and since it, we have only one boundary we are safe to use all the boundary sets and for the loads you can use only the self weight and the surcharge so for the analysis control data so under this we will set the conditions for judging the soft ground so generally soft ground pertains to clay so it is safe to uh, specify a high amount or higher counts for the n values to classify it as a soft ground so for clays 
I will set it as 50 and for sandy soil I'll just set it as 30 so beyond 30 and values no deflection or no immediate settlement must be uh, checked from the sun layers with uh, more than 31 and value count so the initial water level must be placed at zero since we are doing the 1d consolidation analysis at the foundation level then click on ok after that click on apply then close then close so if we want to check the settlement for this uh, area we have to specify it on under the 1d consolidation tab so let's uh, create a settlement calculation position click the settlement calculation position and determine the locations that you want to be checked for the settlement so I will input a distance increment of 50 and set it as 3 click for create calculation positions and if you are not uh, yet satisfied you can add another position here then select uh, or input the calculation position that you want to check so after that click on ok and then proceed to the analysis and report click perform analysis and do not forget to save your uh, soft ground module soft ground file so I will name it as embankment soft ground then click on save so with span of 0.39 seconds the analysis has been completed click on close and under the results tab expand this uh, views under the results tree then check for the consolidation settlement curve since we didn't introduce a construction stage here in our modeling you can see a graph that is a straight line downwards then completely flat afterwards so by checking each tabs you can check for the uh, desired report that you want to extract here in the soft ground module so by checking we have incurred a total settlement of 0.8 meters and most of that settlement happened on the smart surface 12 so that is the clay layer so another function of the soft ground module is you can export the results to check for the uh, stability of the shoulders shoulders uh, you can export this model on the slope module so that the ground materials that has been assigned on your model is also the ground materials adapted on the calculation for the stability of the embankment shoulders in all in order to do that just click the create slope model then check for the created slope model here so we have created the two slope models for that single analysis on the soft ground because uh, the soil works uh, assumes that you have introduced a soil improvement so the improved soil must be uh, saved with the uh, extension of underscore last but since we don't introduce a soil improvement on the soft ground module we can just name it as embankment and LEM then change this to embankment SRM so what are these two parameters so going back So another structural failure is sliding. 
sliding of soil mass is a common structural failure for all retained and sloping soil. In embankment dams, instability of shoulder slope is due to weak foundation and other external causes. So here are the factors affecting stability, which is primarily the soil composition of the embankment, the geometry or the pitch or slope of the shoulders, of course the weak foundation, and the earthquake or in case of earthquake, and the pore water pressure changes. So in checking for the general potential failure of the shoulders, you have to we have to check the upstream slope for rapid drawdown and the downstream slope for steady state seepage condition at ordinary water level. So for this checking, we will use a slope module in slope as stability analysis. So what is the slope module? Slope module is a powerful user-friendly 2D slope stability analysis program using LEM or the limit equilibrium method and the SRM which is the strength reduction method through finite element analysis. It can be used for all types of soil, rock slopes, embankments, earth dams, retaining walls, and etc. It also includes probability and sensitivity analysis in multi-scenario modeling and support designs. So slope reinforcement such as nail and anchors, steel sheet pile, concrete driven pile, and geogrid can be modeled and analyzed here in slope module. So the soil mechanics of def defining a safety factor is the ratio of the allowable or the available shear strength the minimum shear strength needed for equilibrium and soil works provides both SRM and LEM so engineers can choose the method based on their engineering judgment so first we'll ch we will talk about the limit equilibrium method so in LEM slow failure is the sliding of a wedge of soil in a predefined slip surface. So the formulation is, is, is based on principles of limiting equilibrium that satisfies the statics, wherein the summation of moments, horizontal forces, and vertical forces must be equal to zero. And the important assumptions are the wedge of the soil, considering in a slip surface, is divided in slices. The factor of safety is a constant along the slip surface, so therefore, each slice, each slice has the same factor of safety, and factor of safety is defined as the factor by which the soil strength must be reduced so that the potentially sliding mass is a point of a limiting equilibrium. So various solution techniques for the method of slices has been developed and are in common use. The primary difference among all these methods lies in which equations of statics are considered and satisfied which intersliced normal and shear forces are included and the assumed relationship between the intersliced forces. So this table summarizes the conditions for some of the common methods and used here on the slope module. So aside from the equilibrium cases, an important assumption for each method is used in the analysis. So for example, in Simplified Bishop, Simplified Bishop, interslice forces on both sides must be equal. And for Simplified Yanbu, no interslice is acting on the slice and for, and for the Spencer method, Spencer considers that the ratio of interslice forces can be expressed as the tangent of an angle formed by normal and the interslice forces, while Morgan Stern and Price defined it as a function and the angle formed is not constant and additional constant 
and parameters will be used to define the interslice and normal force relationship using the SARMA method. So here you can see the pros and cons of each method in this table. Bishop's method is most widely used for slope stability analysis and is well suited for clays as cohesive materials often go through rotational failure of mass volume about a point of rotation. And for more complex problems involving highly heterogeneous ground with different material between adjacent layers, and where the interslice shear force is expected to vary. You can use either Spencer or Morgenstern price method. However, price method requires good knowledge in slope stability to select or define better functions for meddling the interslice shear forces. Shown here is an example of LEM formulation based on two factor of safety equations. One equation gives the factor of safety with respect to moment equilibrium here and while the other equation gives the factor of safety with respect to horizontal force equilibrium. The idea of using two factor of safety equations was first published by Spencer and it is the uh, formulation used by the software under the Spencer method. So for the finite element method, here is the overview. Due to the shortcomings in LEM method for modeling the actual failure mechanism, continuum based methods were developed such as FEM, finite difference, boundary element and discrete element method and others. And amongst this method, FEM are most widely used to solve slope stability problems, assuming that the material is continuous. So FEM gives more significant results. And this requires iterative analysis. So computationally, they are a little more expensive than LEM methods in terms of definition of modeling through mesh and analysis time. So FEM uh, FEM here in SOILWORKS has two types, which is the SRM and the SAM. So the FEM approach using the SRM, which was first proposed by Zinkwix in this method, the shear strength parameters or the equation and internal, internal friction angle are gradually reduced until uh, such time that the divergence in the solution with respect to convergence criteria such as base of displacement or force or strain energy occurs. So at that point, the slope is said to have failed and the factor of safety is the ratio of initial and the reduced strength parameters at failure. So here in FEM or in SRM, you can display uh, these analysis results by using the uh, vector arrows or the shadings of, incre of incremental displacements and the shadings of incremental shear strains. So for our parameters of the design, here is the sample earth dam cross section with the same earth dam that we have introduced earlier. And for the modeling, for the modeling of geometry, since we have exported the uh, details of the soft ground, we don't have to do an extensive modeling here in slope module. So here are the uh, designed loads and the designed or the load com combination and factor of safety that we will be checked later. So for the program demo, we'll have now to open the LEM or the SRM. So I'm about to open first the embankment LEM. So here, after we exported the results on the soft ground, 
we do not have to determine or input again the uh, ground material properties and assign it on the model data so that time is already cut so we will go now to the LEM method so here in soil works under the LEM tab under the LEM tab we have to in input first the line load at the upper part so we have to check for the line load and introduce a load set so uh, select it as surcharge 2 line load at crest then click on close change the load set to surcharge 2 the load type to distributed load and we will now set the uh, load value as negative 9 for both W1 and W2 change the direction to global Z direction then select a curve then click on apply so after we have done that we can now specify the uh, we can now assume the uh, slow failure happening on our structure so first is we'll check for the slope on the shoulder and we'll generate also a slope failure where the whole embankment and the foundation will be slipping in an arc failure surface so to do that under the LEM tab select for the arc failure surface then introduce a boundary set so going back to our design parameters we'll have to check for the uh, cases of DFL and OWL on our structure so first is we have to account for the DFL level of the DFL or the design flood level acting on the local failure or which is on the embankment area or the shoulder of our embankment dam and also uh, DFL on the global failure which is the failure with, with, with respect to the weakness of the foundation so we don't have to check again for the OWL then ok and for the downstream area sorry for the downstream area we can assume that the water level since we don't uh, know yet uh, what water level must be introduced on the downstream area we have to assume that the water level is at the toe of the earth dam structure so we will set the water at zero so zero water and checking it checking the slope for the global slip at the downstream level so uh, click close then change the boundary set for DFL local usually uh, it is uh, convenient to draw uh, the arc tangent first so we have to assume a slip failure happening on the uh, upstream uh, upstream uh, shoulder of our embankment so by doing uh, assumption so here you can adjust the numbers of the arc tangents also the size so but for now I will stick on uh, arc, inc arc radius increment at the default which is 1 and number of arcs or number of arcs that generated so I will just draw a single arc tangent and for the grid range so here grid range is the is the set of center points 
of your arcs so then we have to apply it first then close so here by defining the tangent and the set of points which is the uh, grid range so you have defined a set of center lines generating a slope failure or the arc failure surface of our slope so if you want to adjust the grid range and the arc tangents just change this selection to grid for arc failure surface Here. after doing that so we may now continue in defining our arc failure surfaces so we will now define a global under the DFL case so draw an arc tangent first draw a grid range corresponding to the set of the tangent lines click on apply then check for the possible arc surfaces that you have defined so if you are uh, satisfied with that uh, set setting we can now define the global failure on the downstream slope so click the draw arc tangent then you can add additional tangent lines and for the grid range you can just uh, draw it there then click on apply and check for the possible slope surfaces arc failure surfaces then after that click on close so after we have defined three cases for the LEM we can now proceed to the analysis so under the analysis case so delete this first then add uh, analysis case which is for the DFL DFL local on the upstream then the analysis method must be LEM select use all mesh sets boundary sets must be for DFL local load set must be for self weight and the surcharge too and for the control data since we have a series of different soil layers I will use the Spencer method and specify the slope direction from right to left then the water level so we will introduce the high water level case on this analysis so input the DFL then click OK after that, after that click apply then we will now uh, create another analysis case for the global failure then same analysis but different boundary set select for the uh, boundary set then move it on the right side to consider the boundary that you want to be adapted in this analysis case so check for the analysis control data then still we are on the DFL global so water level is correct click on OK then apply so for the downstream we can just uh, name it name it as downstream check downstream check then same same analysis method change the boundary set to zero water global 
uh, load set is self weight and surcharge then click on the control data so here we will have to change for the slope direction and change the water level so change it to zero since it is on this level then click on ok and apply so after defining three analysis cases just click close and close and we are now good to run an analysis so you may have to change or specify a design option here but in this case we can continue or proceed to the perform analysis so I don't want to check or create first the results report so I just unchecked it and then I want to perform the three analysis cases so after around uh, one second the analysis is completed then we can now proceed to the results tab so here under this results tab you can manipulate this area or the results menu results tree menu so under this you can just have to uh, expand it and check for the different arc failure uh, surfaces so here since uh, the since or all arc failures or, or all factor of safety is greater than the 1.5 the embankment dam is stable at this condition checking for the DFL and the OWL so if you have to or, or if you want to check the slope stability under the SRM we just have to minimize this then select for the embankment SRM So here in embankment SRM, we have to uh, manipulate again all the ground material properties since all the ground materials are set as LEM. So just select it and delete all ground material properties. But since we have already registered it on the database, you can just access the database and select for the ground data for them so just click the select all and the model type must be on more column and click on assign so again for the foundations just go to the database then select the BH-001 and click on select all and check the model type so before check clicking the assign so after that our ground material properties for SRM is now all set click on close and we have to reassign all the ground material properties here in our model data so first is the clay core earth fill the sand drains the gravel drain in between the sand drain the rift wrap on the upstream and the gabions on the downstream so the first layer for our foundation is silty sand next is clay next is sand then gravel for the these two then another sand between the gravel so after that we have now uh, assigned all the ground material properties on our model data we'll now go to model tab and here on model tab since it is a finite element method analysis we have to click for the smart mesh to do our mesh here in the model data so you can choose uh, three three levels of refinement so for today for faster analysis I want to select first the coarse mesh 
and I want to generate triangular elements. Click on OK. Then, our model is now completed. So, go to the loads and boundaries. Generate a pressure load for, our, for the crest. So, introduce a load set, which is surcharge 2. Then, close and change the boundary curve to curve and directions to global Z direction, setting it as a uniform and set it as, as negative 9. Click on the curve, you want to apply the load, then close. So after defining all the uh, load sets, go now to the support tab or the boundaries tab and introduce a smart support then introduce a boundary set which is the support then click close select for the boundary set as support then click on ok so after that you can see the uh, supports are already introduced and assigned on the boundaries of our foundation so go now to the analysis and design and define an analysis case so delete this first then click on add and let us uh, rename, rename it as SRM stability check then change the analysis method to SRM and select for the use all mesh sets then for the boundary set uh, select the support and for the load set select the self weight and the surcharge so for the control data introduce a water level so we'll set it at per we'll set it first at zero click on ok then we'll go back to the loads and boundaries and assign a water level so we'll assume a complete saturation on the upstream area so by selecting these two curves click on ok and the water level is set at full saturation on the of the grounds here on the upstream then we'll go back to analysis and design let us modify this analysis case go to control data and set the initial water level as the water level introduced earlier click on ok and then ok then click close so while doing the calculations so here are the comparison for the LEM and the FEM here in SoilWorks so in LEM the analysis principle is by the slice method and you have to introduce a method where the equilibrium of forces and moments must be applied while the FEM you have to do a finite element modeling and uh, constitutive equations is already present here on the software so for the analysis results you can check for the safety factor and the critical section which is a predefined earlier and for the FEM you can check for the deformed shape and stress de distribution so the pros and cons of LEM and FEM is for the pros so it is a very simple theory with numerous successful construction cases and for the FEM uh, various ground properties analysis has been introduced and you can check for the displacement and stress results which is the ideal uh, ideal situation on site and for the cons uh, LEM is unable to assess the deformed shape since we are using the slice method and stress distribution of failure and the uh, 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 valid cons of the LEM is we have to uh, assume the slip surface of the structure while in FEM 
it is uh, very difficult to analyze the results and lack of stability evaluation data. So for the input data here in SoilWorks, you can check that the LEM uses only cohesion, internal friction angle, and a few data. While for FEM, you have to complete the more column to introduce a more uh, constitutive model. Another thing is the uh, here are the soil works input differences for the SRM, SAM, and LEM. So you can check it on your analysis manual. So you will have uh, so you will be guided if your input is credited for the LEM, SRM, or SAM. So now that the slope stability analysis report has been generated, click close and we can check that the uh, factor of safety is at 1.7875 and we can check for the displacement on this manner so we can also check for the uh, strains here and you can also check the generated reports as a word format so previously we checked the slope stability in cases of dfl on the upstream and the downstream so next is to account for the rapid drawdown case this is where the changes in pore water pressure uh, will be accounted in the analysis uh, we have to check for the instantaneous draft of water using the uh, soil works C page so first we have to check first the various C page failures which is the heaving or the build up of soil mounds in the downstream due to the uplift pressure caused by the under C page so under C page is the C page that go that travels from the uh, upstream uh, upstream area or the reservoir creeping down to the foundation area creating an uplift and building up soil mounds so another failure is the piping or the progressive erosion which develops through the dam or within its foundation by the water seeping from upstream to the downstream so next is the sloughing, sliding of soil mass in downstream area due to the oversaturation or choking of filter or throttle drain. So we can now proceed to the seepage module. So seepage module is a module dedicated to seepage and coupled analysis. So using seepage module, uh, finite element pore water pressures and complex saturated to unsaturated conditions or transient pore water pressure conditions can be accounted in stability calculations of these of slopes. So some design application areas are related to the flux analysis for tunnel during construction stages, cut off wall problems, pump capacity design for temporary structures and flood control projects involving earth dams and water retention works. So in order to accurately examine the real seepage phenomenon, site conditions of the ground must be recorded, but in most cases, sufficient data may not be readily available. And numerical analysis, on the other hand, is an effective means of readily and similarly analyzing the physical phenomenon of seepage. So seepage flow is governed by the Darcy's law, which states that the seepage flux passing through the volume of soil in steady state is obtained by the permeability coefficient multiplied by the hydraulic gradient and the cross-sectional area. So the, governor, the governing differential equation on the left shows the seepage in a specific time and one of the FEM formulations is the Gallerkin's approach for the planar elements which is stated on the right side. 
So here are the analysis features of the C page. So C page analysis can be largely divided into two, the steady state analysis and the transient state analysis. C page module can simultaneously run an analysis defining the steady and transient flows in the analysis case. And the analysis results can be used as a load input in other modules for coupled analysis. Another, another analysis feature of this module is the simulation of flows for both saturated and unsaturated ground. So the Darcy's law which originated from flow in saturated soil can be extended to unsaturated domains. So there are two methods to define the unsaturated property or unsaturated uh, property of each ground. So first is directly defining the permeability function and water content function using the pressure head using this uh, function here in SoilWorks. And the second is defining the relationship between the pressure head to volumetric water content to permeability ratio. So both methods can be done in C page module for easier modeling and allowing the users to express their engineering judgment. So for the design parameters, we will consider uh, this flood data. So in the span of 24 hours or equivalent to 86,400 seconds, uh, the DFL is reached uh, starting from the ordinary water level at 0 seconds. So DFL was maintained for another two days, accumulating of 259,200 seconds, and where a sudden drop of water happened in an hour. So it can be uh, immediate flushing of water through the floodgates or other cases. But we'll use the simulations on our analysis. So beforehand, I have created a seepage uh, embankment dam model in SoilWorks. So we'll have to open it first. So I just created series of ground material properties to be assigned on our model data. But before that, on the model data under the ground material data, we have to uh, use the second approach in defining the unsaturated properties of the each ground. So by selecting this uh, first ground material property and click the unsaturated property, we have to address the or we have to create a function using this low, the C page module by selecting this button, then it is the uh, preferred, it is the preferred uh, input of the in defining unsaturated property function where the pressure head is uh, graphed or related in the K ratio as well as the pore pressure head is. Uh, as well as the pore pressure head to water content by uh, defining uh, separate function types. But since we don't have uh, data for uh, this input, we can now proceed to the other input which it can be a volumetric water content to pressure head to permeability coefficient ratio or defining the uh, unsaturated property function using the degree of saturation to pressure head and the degree of saturation to permeability coefficient ratio K. So first we have to specify a function name. So first uh, we will define a function name as sand or fine sand then setting the ground type as uh, spine sand and D for the SK relationship we have to select sand so after that click on apply then we have to do that series of commands 
for sand gravel change the name to gravel and clay also you can uh, express this uh, sr to p relationship through the user defined function same as with the sk relationship so after that click on close and selecting again the earth fill we have to uh, check the unsaturated property and select from the drop down that we have defined earlier the fine sand then click on add or modify click on modify then for the clay core uh, same process since it's clay set at set this as clay then modify sand drain as sand gravel drain as gravel then for the riprap since uh, we don't have uh, enough data to consider for riprap and gabions so we'll uh, will not introduce an unsaturated property functions for riprap's and gabions so under silty sand change the uh, function to fine sand then for clay same thing with sand and gravel then after that click on close and we will now reassign all the uh, C page ground material properties on our model data so just do uh, drag and drop then select all the surface So after that, we are now finished modeling or we are now finished assigning the ground material properties on our model data. So since we are doing the FEM approach or finite element or modeling or analysis, we have to create mesh. So by selecting the smart mesh and define a fine mesh and generate triangular and higher order elements click on ok so now the the mesh of our model data is now finished so under the boundaries and analysis we have to specify the cases for DFL, OWL and the ordinary water level so under the nodal head and define the boundary set we have to define the DFL for the steady state another for OWL same state OWL state then click close changing the boundary set to DFL and the selection to curve set the nodal value as the uh, water level on our data so 27.5 then select the curves that we want to apply the dfl click on apply then change this to owl and change the value for nodal head which is 18 same thing set the type as curve select for the curves then click on apply and close so after defining the nodal head for the steady state 
we have to define now the uh, water level for our transient case so another for the nodal head specify a transient the dfl or just name it as rapid drawdown rapid drawdown case so click close change the type to curve select same curves here for our reservoir then introduce a water level function so for water level function so we can just set it as for example an emergency case where you have to uh, flash a large amount of water instantaneously then we have to apply the design parameters of our flood level so at time zero the water level is at 18 18 meters and at time of 86 400 seconds we have already reached the design flood level so assuming that this was maintained for another two days which is 259 200 same level which is 27.5 and drop uh, considerably up to the up to the OWL in only a span of one hour so adding 360 to 360 to the previous uh, time we have now defined the instantaneous draft or the rapid drawdown of water so 1R is a, a good assumption for these large values of so the, for these large heads of water then click on close or click on add then click on close so since we have specified a function we can now select that function and change the factor for the function as 1 then change the boundary set as rapid drawdown then click on ok so after defining all the water levels or nodal heads we can now we have to define now the review boundary so the review boundary is the downstream counterpart of the water level so we, we will have to uh, set the downstream so we have to rename it as downstream as our endpoint of our C page click close then change the boundary set as downstream change the selection to curve then we can assume that C page will travel from the upstream which is the reserve area passing through this manner so it is safe to assume that water may penetrate uh, from this area up to this area so we are select we are not selecting the gabion since that is our counterweight for heaving so after selecting that click on apply then close then after doing that we can now proceed to the analysis case so for the analysis case we have to add uh, or DFL uh, steady using the analysis method of steady state C page using all mesh sets and boundary sets is for DFL and the downstream click on apply and also we have to check for the ordinary operating condition or ordinary water level under the analysis method of steady state changing the boundary set or the water head as OWL but not the uh, review boundary click on apply and for our drawdown rapid drawdown under emergency cases uh, see, we will have to use all mesh sets and 
changing the water level as rapid drawdown and since it is a function water level function we have to thoroughly define the analysis control data so under this uh, dialog box you have to determine or specify or change this first change the analysis method to transient state I'll select all mesh sets checking again downstream OWL uh, change the OWL to rapid drawdown case and downstream then specify the analysis control data so here you have to determine the time steps so we have to check for the auto generation defining the 25 or selecting the 259560 seconds and check for the three steps checking the save result and lag scale to create the steps so I want to edit this part since I want to check the C page phenomenon at 259200 and midway between 86 and 259 which is around 100,000 and 86,400 so click on OK and press OK and apply then close and close so after defining three analysis cases we can now proceed to perform analysis after performing the analysis we have to close this then check for the results tab and manipulate this area so first check for the priatic line at the FL steady then click on apply immediately and you can check that the <coughs> the phreatic line uh, considerably uh, goes down by passing the clay core then you can check that the flow paths or the flow paths are directly going to the drains so that indicates a good uh, simulation and assumption <coughs> and placing of the drains then you can also check for the flux results and change the quality to arbitrary section and I have a So we have to redo this area, the start and end around the gabions part, then click on add, then calculation. So a positive value means an inflow at that cross section and negative outflow negative value means outflow. There. So you can check for the uh, flux results by that manner. So also you can manipulate this part checking for the flow quantities and uh, correlating this, uh, these results to the legend on the right side. So changing the analysis to OWL steady and checking first for the phreatic line so since the draft the draft of water uh, relatively from the upstream to the downstream is not that high you can consider changing the uh, soil composition of your clay core so it should drop from ordinary water condition the drain area 
for more efficient uh, impermeable layer or core. So checking for the rapid drawdown case and changing the analysis to the time specific uh, function of the transient which is at 259200 or the last time step then checking for the phreatic line so you can export this to your slope model and calculate the uh, change in factor of safety considering the rapid drawdown so going back for the presentation <coughs> or going back with the presentation so these failures can be controlled by this, uh, this part and can be uh, viewed in CPH module by checking for the uh, specific areas for example the hydraulic gradient the flow path pore pressure and etc if the evaluated results uh, considers the heaving so you can add the gabions and act as the counterweight and another is to lengthen the flow path you can also consider deepening the cut of trench in this case the cut of trench uh, was placed under or uh, meet the clay layer so that's efficient but if it's not the case you can always do another control another control detailing such as foundation grout grouting or the sheet piling so next is the piping so you can choose better soil composition by checking the flux results and the flow path and the seepage velocity so you can change the you can check the seepage velocity here changing the ground element seepage results then check for the uh, velocity and the hydraulic gradient so under the degree of saturation for the sloughing since we don't uh, permit this kind of uh, saturation so it is ideal to change the the specifications of your clay core so that uh, sloughing uh, can uh, can be uh, controlled another point is by improving the drain capacity since we have checked that the drain capacity cannot hold the uh, the water or the seepage water creeping from the upstream to the passing through the clay core so those are the checks that you can do here in seepage module and for the uh, and in order to import the results from seepage to slope we will now go to slope here and uh, check this free mode then go to the loads and boundaries check the result from other case and open model file so here you can you have to select the C page module here on the embankment tab changing this uh, file to C page model selecting C page embankment dam then open here you can uh, check for the uh, DFL and OWL cases so we will be using the OWL case for the downstream slope and the rapid drawdown at final time then import these results then click close so you can check that the results have been imported under the loads tab so here you can check that the uh, results from C page module has been ex exported here or imported here then we have to create analy an another analysis case for this uh, specific analysis 
So we have to check for the rapid drawdown and DFL with static seismic. So under the uh, slope module, first is we have to check for the upstream upstream uh, drawdown or change this to drawdown upstream the analysis method is LEM select all me all mesh sets or layer sets then the water level must be the drawdown from the C page then the boundary set must be checked for the uh, we have to choose uh, for example first the DFL local drawdown upstream local then check for the control data upstream is uh, right to left then water level don't uh, don't specify water level then click on OK and apply so upstream drawdown upstream global uh, select the DFL local and move it to the left and select for the DFL global uh, for the boundary set we are adapting only the uh, the defined arc failure in the model data then click on apply and close so we have created another two analysis cases and create one more for uh, DFL plus uh, static seismic under global so for that you have to use all mesh sets under global is DFL global Then for the load is the surcharge two. Then change the analysis control data to uh, right to left direction, and the initial water level must be the DFL. Click on OK. Change the analysis to Spencer. Click on OK. Then apply. So, another is for the uh, steady state OWL. OWL is steady downstream. Then use all mesh sets. Boundary sets must be the zero water global at downstream. Then we have to incorporate this result, which is the OWL steady and the surcharge 2 so for the control data it should be Spencer then left to right and the water level must be unchecked click on OK then apply so click close then I have to check this part first yes change to Spencer then OK OK So we have to create to run another uh, four cases for stability then click close then perform analysis and check this then check only the analysis that you want to be viewed or just check it all then perform then click close and uh, go to the results tab to check for the analysis results so we are expanding all the analysis cases to check for the results so you, you can check for the uh, visible a uh, drop in the factor of safety from the DFL case on here checking for the rapid drawdown here 
So rapid drawdown is a, a stability check must that must be performed. But for the static seismic, so let us check. So under LEM, in to introduce the static seismic load, <coughs> select the static seismic load, then define a static seismic, then close. The load set must be SS, factor at X must be 0.2. For our uh, considerations, click OK. Then, under the analysis case, redefine the DFL plus SS global and select for the SS. DFL global is already there. Then, click on OK. Then, close. So, we have to reperform that part. So, selecting that, just click on Perform Analysis. Then, after that, click on Close. And checking for the analysis at Seismic Global. So, you can check that the factor of safety is only 1.06, which is a failing uh, factor of safety under this uh, criteria. So if you want to check the forces acting on the slice, just double click the slice and it will uh, show you the uh, free body diagram that you that uh, that has been acting on that particular slice. So you can see that the uh, uh, lateral load which is the earthquake has been incorporated here in our free body diagram. Click on close. So all of these are stated on the report that we have generated if, so you, if you want to check that just uh, go for look for the embankment slope report here so on the report you can see that it already has the table of contents the overview or the review for the slope stability analysis the applied safety factor so you just have to uh, check for some minor details for example this dry season and rainy season details but all in all you, you can generate a report using the slope module as well as other modules so that's uh, that's how you do the C page slope coupled analysis and all in all you have to use three modules in order to check for the static consideration of earthquake and other like a rapid drawdown and the st stability of the shoulders you have to use soft ground slope and seepage and if you want to consider the dynamic effects of the earthquake you may want to try the dynamic module also here in soil works so that would be four out of seven functions or modules in one software so that would be all for my presentation and if you have more questions, you may still contact us on our FB page or email us directly at pageinquiry at